Back in a previous video, we covered the topic of situational awareness, or being aware of what and who is around you, what to take into consideration in case a self-defense situation arises, and any safety measures that you can take. Today, I wanted to talk about one of those specific environments and take a look at self-defense in the parking lot. You know, you're in a dojo, it's a very controlled setting. You've got air conditioning, you've got four walls, a roof above your head, sometimes padded floors. It's a safe, controlled environment. Outside, it's a very, very different scenario. You've got different types of terrain, you've got weather to deal with, you've got heat, you've got obstacles, other people. It is not a controlled environment. And this is where you're most likely to encounter a problem in an uncontrolled environment, so always take stock of where you are. So I like to always, whenever I go somewhere new, I don't care if it's indoors or outdoors, a place I've been to many times or brand new, you walk in and I just like to survey. You don't have to be obvious about it, you don't, don't be scoping around, but kind of, you walk in, take a look around, notice lots of people, traffic, any holes or slippery areas in the floor, anything like that. I wanna talk about terrain. Terrain to me is a big, big factor because your footing is everything. If you don't have balance, if you don't have a solid stance or footing, you have a big problem and you're probably gonna wind up on the ground or even losing. So what I like to do, I have a habit. Whenever I walk in somewhere, I just kind of take stock of the ground. You know, I just kind of check traction. See, even right here, it's a little bit slippery. There's some loose gravel. You've got the construction right here. So in the parking lot, obviously we have pavement and concrete. There might be construction, loose gravel. This could very easily kick up and slip on you if you're not careful. Curbs. So now you have a terrain difference in terms of level. So big difference, you're fighting on here. It's very easy to step down and fall, roll an ankle, even going the other way, tripping over it. You've got loose gravel, you've got tree roots, you've got trees. Okay, there could be stumps that you don't see, loose sticks, rocks, grass. So grass alone is kind of versatile in itself. I mean, you know, this is a dry day, summery day. It's, you know, it's pretty, it's got some decent traction, but you don't know if it's loose or not. It could kick up, it could rip up on you. Also, there's a big difference between dry grass and wet grass. You know, you don't totally lose your traction. Gla grass can become slippery. So if it's been raining, if it's early in the day and there's dew or moisture anywhere, you're near a pond or a lake or a canal, all of this can drastically affect your footing. Even parking lines, the paint strips, those get wet, those can be very slippery. I had an incident once before, I was on crutches and the crutch hit the paint strip and I slipped on it. Gotta be careful. So my first thing I do is I walk anywhere, I check my footing all the time. And you can be very discreet about it. Just kind of check your traction and just ask yourself, will I be able to run on this? Will I be able to fight on this? Am I in a slippery hazard? Just be aware of the kind of traction and footing and terrain you have to deal with because you never know when something's gonna break out where you're gonna be standing. Let's talk about the obvious thing in the parking lot. Parking, cars. You've got two types of cars to deal with here. You've got parked cars, which can be obstacles or tools. And you also have moving cars, driving cars. So not only, not only do you have the risk of running into an obstacle, fighting up against a car, you have to watch out for moving traffic. And if someone's not aware of you, cars drive by all the time. And if someone's not aware of you, you can easily get hit. So your opponent is not your only threat. You've got pedestrian traffic and you've got cars too. You really gotta watch out for that. Some safe practices you can take, obviously, just keep an eye on what's around you. Are there a lot of people? Is the parking lot empty? If the parking lot is empty, keep track of, you know, are there any possible dark spots, corners, just anything to be aware of. Also, um, there's a lot of little tools you can get, self-defense tools. I personally like the Coupaton. You know, it's basically a keychain. It's a little steel rod or aluminum rod, and it can be used for soft targets, eyes, throats, groin. It could also be used for wrist locks if you train with it a little bit. So it's kind of a nice subtle tool to have on you. I'm gonna list this in the description below if you're interested. I recommend picking one up. They're, they're pretty cheap and they're, they're really handy to have on you. I've also got a few other items down there that are good for personal self-defense that you might keep on you. Just give yourself an edge, a little bit of advantage if something happens. Weather, let's get back to weather a little bit. It talked about the wet grass, but just look at the big picture. Okay, today's a nice, bright, sunny day, but especially in areas like if it's arid or South Florida where it gets really humid, it gets hot. And you might not be aware of it at the time, adrenaline is running, but that heat bearing down on you, if the situation goes on long enough, that you could put yourself at risk, you know, for possible heat stroke, exertion, overheating, just gotta be aware of that. 
Flip side of that, if you're somewhere where it gets really cold, snow, that's an extra terrain concern. Now you've got ice to worry about. Snow, slippery, and grass, big, big concern. If it's raining, you know, everything might be slippery. You might not be able to get a grip on things. It might even impair your vision. Weather takes a big effect on you. You don't have any of that indoors or inside of the dojo to train with, so keep that in mind. Let's talk about the difference between day and night. Right now is daytime, okay? Visibility is excellent. Something you might not take into account, the sun. That sucker's bright. You find yourself in a self-defense situation in a fight with somebody, try not to be in a position, if possible, where the sun is right in your eyes. You don't want that kind of impairment. If you can maneuver it, maybe if you're kind of sizing each other up or you're trying to kind of maneuver the situation, maybe turn, try to get them where they're facing the sun. Anything, anything that can aid you in your advantage, do it. It's only gonna help you. At the very least, it helps you see a little bit better than them. At night, it's a little bit of a different story. Obviously, you don't have the sun to, to give you this kind of clarity. Uh, but most parking lots will have street lamps or some sort of street lights. That's good, but they're really only there to give you visibility driving and getting to your car. One concern, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, it really depends on what type of lights there are. If you see the light is orange, that is uh, typically a sodium vapor lamp. Now, it might not sound like a big deal, but what the big deal about that is, is sodium vapor lamps have a very, very low color rendering and color profile and they all also operate on a different frequency than our eyes are accustomed to at nighttime. So there's a lot of detail our eyes will miss. So that can be the difference of seeing somebody in the shadows or not. There's a dark spot and somebody's hiding in it or Steve just standing in it with a sodium vapor lamp, you might not see them. Now, if it's a blue lamp, then that's more LED and LEDs are gonna give you much better clarity. They're gonna be brighter, sharper, and you're gonna see a wider color spectrum. So that will affect visibility. So basically, blue or white or LED lights, those are better. Be careful with the orange lights. If it's orange, just be aware that the dark spots, you might not be able to see everything that's going on in them. Now, as you can see, we're standing here in an open parking lot. Lots of maneuverability, you know, parking's light right now, but even if there's a lot of cars, there's still open space. Clear visibility. Might not be the same case in a closed parking lot or a parking structure. You've got different terrain considerations there. You've got closed spaces, usually a lot more packed with cars. You've got pillars, you've got a lot more hiding spots. Even sound gets distorted, it echoes a lot. So if you try to call for help, you might not be clear. So just be aware of the difference between open lot and parking garage, very different environments. So if you are unfortunate enough to find yourself in a situation where you have to defend yourself in the parking lot, you can't escape it, the fight's gonna happen. All right, what are we working with now? Well, let's go back to the cars. You've got parked cars. You know, if you're caught up against them, you've got things like the glass to worry about. You know, heads, hands, body parts, elbows can go through the glass. That can really hurt you, or you can use that against them, but it's very dangerous. You also have side mirrors. If you're sliding up against the cars, watch out for those kidneys, watch out. That's gonna hurt. It might even stop your momentum. If you're trying to slip away, that might even impede your movement. Use it against them if you can. Obviously, if you're in any drive through area, moving cars are a very, very, very big hazard. They might not see you, especially if you're come, popping around the corner or if someone falls down, you know, cars are a hazard. If the fight goes to the ground between cars, you're not gonna be visible, okay? People walking around might not see you, so make a lot of noise. Call for help, scream, yell, say call the police, because if someone does see you, it might not necessarily be clear who's attacking who, especially if you're ground fighting, and especially if you do have martial arts experience and you're using it, call for help, call for police, make it known, make as much rack as you can because you might not be visible. And if you're not visible, you're definitely on your own. And also there's got a lot less space to maneuver between cars. You know, if you're in a really tight spot, you're not gonna be able to pull any reversals or you know a lot of rolls. You're gonna be tight knit space, so watch out for that. If you're ground fighting in the open area, again, moving cars, you're now lower on the visibility line. A car might not see you. So do your damage, get back up on your feet as soon as possible. Okay, we've talked about our obvious hazards. You know, you've got the terrain considerations, weather, trees, environment, parked cars, as well as moving cars. You know, that's the obvious stuff. Now let's get down to the finer detail. What other tools can you use at your disposal? What's around you? Well, let's look around. First of all, this could be a weapon, it could be a defense, you could throw it, you could swing it, you could trip over it, so you gotta watch out for that, it could be used against you. Also, what else do you have? You've got 
possibly shopping carts, signs. Are you carrying groceries? Groceries can be a weapon. If you've got a plastic bag that hangs down, you can swing that, especially if it has weight to it. At the very least, you can throw it up, be a distraction, get them to bring their hands up. Might buy you a split second to run or get a kick in or something. So whatever you're holding, you can use as a tool. You could have loose rocks and sticks, water bottles, cans, shopping carts. There's a whole bunch of things. Just take stock in your environment, chairs. There's always something you can look at and use and also be aware of what could be used against you. Environments are usually rich with detail. Take advantage of that detail. What about the person themselves? What are they wearing? What are you wearing? Are you wearing closed shoes, sneakers, high heels? If you're in high heels, watch out for drains. You know, you don't want to run across a drain in high heels. You don't want to drop your keys on there either. Then you've really got a problem. So are you wearing flip flops? You, you're not going to have a lot of rotation and be able to run with flip flops. What are they wearing? Are they wearing a hoodie or a shirt that you can grab? You know, especially judo and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's a lot of gi chokes. They're wearing a jacket. Hey, that, that stuff will work great, especially with zippers across the neckline and all that. That could be effective. If they're just wearing a t-shirt, you know, what are they wearing? What can you hold on to? We're in South Florida. People might wear suntan lotion. Skin can be slippery, so gripping might be an issue. Just kind of look at the person. Are they wearing shoes? Are they wearing flip-flops? What can you use against them? What do you have to worry about being used against you? Get out of there, escape. If you have a coupon, go for the eyes, go for the throat, go for soft targets. Just at least if they're grabbing you, get out of that grab and run. Call the cops, go to safety, go to another store if anything is open. Don't just stay there. Your goal is to escape. You're not there to combat and prove yourself. Your goal is to escape and survive. So let's talk about the escape for a second. This kind of goes back to the beginning of this video when I mentioned when you first go to an environment, take stock of what's around you, check your traction, check the people, check the obstacles check escape routes, just kind of know ahead of time if there was a situation or an emergency, where could you go? You know, I, I mean, it might be obvious, I'm in a big wide open space, but even right here, I could run this way easily. I can go that way a little bit if I want to go inside, but there's a wall there. Can't really run this way, we've got water. So that's really not an exit path, at least not a good one for me. I can, you know, just kind of see what's around you. If you're in a parking garage, again, you're gonna have even limited spaces. So when you get to a new place or environment in your parking lot, just kind of in the back of your head thinking, if something happens, for whatever reason, whatever emergency, where can I go? What is available for me? And where, where am I locked off of? You want to avoid being caught in corners. You know, you want to avoid anywhere where you can't run. Water is, is going to be a problem. Again, survey and have in the back of your mind a plan B if something were to happen. So those are just some of the observations I've seen. And then I can look, I mean, just here in this environment, I look around, this is what I'm noticing. Now, I'm in South Florida, you know, we're pretty flat land around here. What if you live somewhere with hills? You know, there's a lot of parking lots that have unle unlevel grounding. You've got potholes, you've got hills, you've got ramps. All that will drastically change the situation. So I'm actually kind of curious, what else can you guys add? What other hazards in the parking lot or tools can you guys think of that would aid your escape or your self-defense situation? The gritty thought of being in a situation like this in the parking lot can be very scary. There's a lot at play, a lot to take into consideration. If you are able to avoid the situation, obviously that is best. But if something happens, try to use that environment as much as you can. And remember the goal is to escape and get to safety. Don't try to stand your ground. Don't try to prove yourself and punish them. Get away and leave. Hopefully if any of our viewers can pull at least one idea out of this and is able to defend themselves or even better yet, avoid the situation altogether, then it was all worth it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, we appreciate all of our viewers. The more this channel grows, the more we can do and present to you all. So I please ask all of you, share, subscribe, send us to all your friends. Let's get this community bigger so we can do more of these. Thank you so much for your support.